the Pacific International Hospital has all your healthcare needs under one roof. Uh, I'm Dr. Ronald Galicio, and uh, I'm a heart specialist, a cardiologist. In my practice here in PNG, I've been uh, getting a lot of cases of ischemia or the coronary artery disease, and uh, some with the arrhythmia or irregular beating of the heart problem. Also, there are cases of uh, valve disease or structural damage in the, in the valve inside the heart. And um, some would come with the complaint of uh, uh, having some the fluid in, in, in the um, surroundings of the heart muscles. Well, the most common I uh, encounter here in PNG would be the uh, ischemia, or what we call the coronary artery disease. And uh, there are a lot of patients, about uh, 80 to 90 percent of uh, Papua New Guineans come with this kind of uh, complaint. Um, most of the patients coming in with the coronary artery disease or ischemia would complain of chest pain, most uh, commonly. And uh, some would complain of uh, easy fatigability, or they usually get tired whenever they do the usual work they, they have been doing in the past. And uh, shortness of breath, and some of them would be having palpitations or unusual feeling on the chest. Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, this CAD, they usually get this uh, coronary artery disease by uh, getting some risk factors. Uh, uh, there are a lot of risk factors which are present in the Papua New Guineans, mm -hmm. like uh, obesity itself, which is very high in this population, and the uh, prevalence of uh, high blood pressure, also with the uh, high cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. and uh, because of this uh, obesity or over, being overweight, it, it leads to physical inactivity, of what we call the sedentary lifestyle and uh, cigarette smoking, which is the most single uh, important factor for this uh, CAD. They get this disease because of the presence of the risk factors. They, they can be able to, to reduce their risk by uh, uh, addressing the said risk factors, which are, for example, the, the, the smoking itself, which is, uh, as I've said, this is a more, more one of the most important uh, sing, single factor in preventive cardiology. If you smoke about 20, 30 uh, pack or rather sticks a day, it will increase your risk of developing heart disease or heart attack about two to three fold. If you cease, uh, cease smoking, it will decrease your risk of having a heart attack by 36%. Uh, being obese also is one of the risk factors. So you ha what you ha can do is to try to maintain your ideal body weight. And uh, doing some walking uh, in about uh, 30 minutes a day, or most days of the week, or at least five days a week, will reduce your, your uh, risk of having heart attack by 30%. Mm -hmm. And also high blood pressure, you have to watch it. And... Uh, High blood pressure meaning to say that your, your blood pressure is going up to about more than 140. And uh, systolic, that's uh, 140 on 90. That's also a risk of developing a heart attack. Uh, increased level of cholesterol would be also the one to, to accentuate the progression of a coronary artery disease. And there's what we call the metabolic syndrome. Now, the, this metabolic syndrome is a con conglomeration of the risk factors, which are in itself, if they exist alone, may not be able to significantly affect your risk of having heart attack. But if they do exist in, 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 in conglomeration or in cluster, they, they uh, put your risk significantly at a very high level. Like uh, when you have a waist circumference of more than 108 for the male, mm -hmm. or, or 88 centimeter for the female, that's one. Another one is uh, if you have an increased triglycerides, which is uh, a bad fat in the body, may also lead you to, to, or may qualify you for a metabolic syndrome. And number three is uh, when you have a blood sugar 
higher than 100 milligram per deciliter. Like if you have 105, 110, that's not even uh, does not qualify for for the uh, diabetes mellitus. But uh, at that level, it may increase your risk if they uh, coexist with other risk factors. Uh, the fourth one will be the the presence of uh, or very low good cholesterol, or what they call the HDL cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third one would be the presence of uh, uh, like obesity. And then these, these factors, if they occur significantly in the in cluster, they would uh, put your trees to develop heart attack. Well, the, first and foremost, generally, I uh, recommend and suggest to decrease the intake of salt. I, I, I um, uh, noticed that most of the patients I see here would have the high intake of salt, and I, I notice it in the general public. Your salt intake is very high. That will increase the propensity to develop the high blood pressure and cascading down the line. And uh, secondly is the avoid taking fats. Like uh, you can take lean meat, of course in moderation. Avoid the, the fat portion and the skin portion of the meat. And also the, take more of the, the uh, fish and the greens. That will help you a lot. And uh, that's just, um, I'm specific with the skins, like chicken skins, mm -hmm. pork skins, they, they contain bad fats and they, they would really um, affect your uh, cardiovascular condition. Now, uh, once the patient has developed this thing here, uh, what we can do once the CAD is diagnosed is that uh, you will have to, to be on medication uh, and, uh, to control the risk, addressing the risk factors and to avoid the acute complications like such, such a heart event, which is a, a very fatal one. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you're diagnosed, you may go for further testing like uh, treadmill stress test, which can help us diagnose this thing here, which we do here also. Uh, and uh, echocardiography also we do here, which can be a supplementary um, uh, mode of uh, investigative uh, workup. But uh, also the, the use of coronary angiography, which is uh, the gold standard of diagnosing this kind of disease, is uh, very much uh, recommended. The thing is that uh, presently, uh, for unfortunately, that we don't have it here anywhere in PNG. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think the management of PIH has been uh, on, on the, its way of uh, introducing this kind of uh, technology uh, once we open the Taurama or the bigger hospital. That will be soon. The Pacific International Hospital has all your healthcare needs under one roof. We join Bill for the Brian Bill segment and that's up next, so stay with us. Mm -hmm.